Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I am back with another energetic channeled video. This has been a super requested video since the event date, which was November 13th of 2022. I'm talking about the Idaho Four as they have been nicknamed in the media. The four college kids, students, who were murdered in the middle of the morning or early morning on November 13th of 2022 and the two remaining roommates that survived and were able to walk away in the physical. I've been extremely hesitant to do this video because of the content of feeling that energy and all week I've been directed to do the video and I have gone in a multitude of directions. This is not one thing that had these kids killed. This is not like crazy guy in jail stalking them, wanting to kill them because he has a murder fantasy. That's what they want you to think or that's what is being presented and or projected. This is multifaceted. This was a trifecta. There are at least three different groups, organizations or focuses going into the murders and each person that was murdered was murdered for a different reason. That includes being a distraction as to why you would kill four people. It's not as it appears. It is integral. It involves university, three-letter organizations, all kinds of things in a succession of a energy that's coming at one time and they are pushing it. It even involves humanizing, human weaponizing, okay? So the weaponizing of a human brain, which is the case of Brian Koberger, the person that they have in jail currently. So I had to look up the birthdays of everybody, obviously, and also the chart for approximately 4 a.m. on the morning of the 13th, which almost identically sun in Scorpio and moon in Cancer, the same as the accused killer, okay? So, and I did a 6 a.m. chart for him, obviously, because I don't have a time of birth. I can't find a time of birth. But what I found even more interesting is at the time that Brian Koberger was born, okay? So he was born on November 21st of 1994. There was um, a penumbral eclipse that happened, I believe it was on the 18th of November of that year, and it hit the axis of Scorpio Taurus, okay? So he has a Scorpio sun and a Cancer moon. That's as far as I could go into his chart. I didn't even bother looking at the rest. I looked at the aspects. I can see how somebody would think the way he thinks and be the way that he is, totally. And Scorpio rules sex, death, and transformation makes perfect sense to me. But also, on a karmic level, that eclipse precipitated his birth. Now, the murders, the same eclipse happened, but the nodes were flipped. North node in Taurus, south node in Scorpio. And then that was on the 8th of November of 2022. So we have the same energy. That's what involved him. Like in my head, I was like, wow, snap, click. There was a click there and I don't have, obviously I don't have both specific charts. I did run 4 a.m. on the day of the murders just to put the energy in and it was Scorpio, Sun, Cancer, Moon. And I was like, whoa, that's interesting. Uh, the other kids, now, as I said, Ethan, or I don't know if I said it, maybe in my head I said it, Ethan has a time of birth listed online. I don't know if it's accurate. He was one of three triplets, and he was the firstborn, and it's stating uh, October 28th of 2002, 4.43 p.m., Seattle, Washington, which gives him a Taurus rising, okay? 58 second Taurus rising, which means he would be affected by the eclipse, the lunar eclipse, the blood moon, prior to the murders, okay? He would be, and I suspect they all have something in their chart, Scorpio or Taurus. If I knew the times of birth, this would be great. I don't. So we have Kaylee, and she is a June 8th of 2001. We have Zana, and she is a July 5th of 2002. 
Then we have Madison or Maddie, and she is of May 25th of 2002. Now, Bethany, one of the surviving roommates, they suggest that she has an April birth date, same age group, same age uh, peer group, but they say April. That could be Aries or Taurus. I'm going to say it's probably Taurus because of those eclipses. Okay, so it's probably Taurus. I could find nothing, okay, nothing on Dylan. No, no birth date, no suggestion of a birth date, nothing. Okay, so when they hide birth dates online, I should be able to find a birth date somewhere. Somebody, some school, some book, some something. Nothing has been posted to a birth date that I could find. So no birth date on that. Now, here's what I feel happened the night that this happened or preceding this because it's a projection of things. So I want to talk about Brian Koberger to begin with because I feel that he was there. I am not disputing that. I feel like he was there. I feel like he was known to everybody in that house. No one peripherally, no one through a friend of a friend, no one. Okay, I don't feel like he was somebody that they didn't know. I feel like somebody in that house absolutely knew him. I also, from the energy of Brian, feel like the connection to him is a weaponized human mindset. Weaponized. Uh, he was clicked into action. I don't know if this happens outside of what we know on earth and is a spiritual element to it or I, I actually feel that he was and is a weaponized human being. So I feel these ideas were projected onto him and he was placed in that area very specifically to cause distraction. There are a multitude of things going on and I don't even think that his brain understands what's going on. I'm not saying he's not guilty. What I'm saying to you is there is a succession of events and there is multiple reasons for those people being murdered, not just one and not just one person and not just one group of people. This is a complete trifecta, a perfect trifecta of three different organizations. My mind was going everywhere, okay? Speaking to me, I had trouble sleeping. My mind was going absolutely over here, over there, trying to feel the energy. I heard Kaylee say very strongly, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. And I was trying to ask her, what are you sorry for? Because I don't think she had anything to do with it. I think she spoke out of turn to somebody that she thought was a friend of hers. And this is a guy, not a girl. I feel like she was in the acquaintance of somebody who she did not know was connected to the group that she was speaking about. And I feel like that tripped her up. I don't feel like she knew or she read it or she could see it. So I feel like she came into the proximity of one of the three different people, different circumstances, different groups, if you want to put it like that, one of the three different groups that was focused on removing the people in that house from what they did. I also then whipped right over to Dylan and there is a complete mask over her energy field. I cannot read her for the life of me and she is not who she presents herself to be. I will tell you that. I feel like it's a complete inversion. It's completely inverted. It's not as she presents herself. Now this could be self-preservation. I don't deny that. But I can't get a fix on the energy because she projects outwardly something that she isn't. Okay, I can tell you that much. That doesn't mean anything. A lot of people do that. So what I saw with her is that when the person walked in the house, okay, so when the person walked in the house, the person she describes in a mask, I feel like she saw them walking in the house. So... When she says she saw them leaving, I believe she saw that as well. But I think she left out the part where she saw them walking in the house and opened the door and they walked right by her. And I do feel like they saw her. So there's some kind of recognition there because they saw her. Whatever the recognition is, why ever they didn't kill her, there is a reason. There is acknowledgement there. I think she opened the door and went, oh shit, and shut the door. Okay, this is 
prior to what happened happen. She either caught the back end of them or caught it right on the way by. I don't feel like Bethany saw any of that, but I feel like Bethany knows exactly what was going on, but maybe during what was going on. Obviously, if you hear sounds like that, and I'm really hesitant to believe that they did not hear the sounds of people being murdered. I'm pretty sure you heard them. That house, I'm pretty sure you heard them. I can hear a creak in my house. I mean, there's no way you didn't hear them. You may have tuned it out. You may not have wanted to deal with it, but there's no way you can't hear that. That house was not that big and it seemed like it was pretty actually run down or not really, not really sturdy. It wasn't like a mansion with 75 rooms. So I got the distinct feeling that both the surviving roommates actually did hear what went on. I am also seeing Kaylee and Madison at some kind of establishment, bar, restaurant, whatever. Um, I see them talking, they're eating something. So it could be like at a bar stool. It's a table, not a booth table. They're sitting there talking and who they're talking to is a turncoat or a Benedict Arnold or a person who is setting them up getting information about when they're going home, what they're going to be doing. I feel like the girls were talking to the enemy without knowing it was the enemy. Now, what do I mean by that? You're thinking, who wants to kill young girls, right? Besides sexual pervert, which is where this case is going when they focus on Brian Koberger. They focus on, you know, he's uh, like on the spectrum. He's OCD and he is a Scorpio. They do stalk people. I mean, that's just factual. They do it for fun. Scorpio rising, Scorpio moon, whatever. Scorpio sun, they can't help themselves. They rule that part of the chart. They also make great detectives, okay? So they will research. I feel like Brian was called in to the house after the fact or during the fact to follow up on the fact. That's actually what I think. I don't I realize he was there, but I, I'm trying to feel what he's doing and it feels like I'm cleaning up behind somebody. I'm cleaning up. Okay. So it looks a little bit, and I'm not apologizing for him. I don't even want to hear that in there. I'm telling you what I'm feeling and I don't have to feel what is written in the newspaper. That's not how psychic works. That's not how mediumship works. That's not how energy reading works. And I'm getting really um, amped up with it. I hear Kaylee again saying, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I hear Xana talking to her mother. I'm hearing that. There's something going on with her mother in the next five months where the mother either has to have surgery or some kind of medical issue. And Xana is saying, it's okay. I'm okay. Like she's saying it. You don't have to. To do this you don't you don't like uh, it's hard to believe it's just it's hard to believe but that's what I'm hearing so Xana is very focused on her mother very focused on that um, I'm feeling like everybody was killed slightly differently as in there were different weapons used I'm gonna word it like that so one may not actually be a knife it may be something else it may be a sharp edge thing what was so interesting is I, when I was trying to feel the energy, was thinking of people that sharpen weapons, like other kinds of things like ski poles and stuff, and they sharpen it where it could look like a knife or stick somebody like a knife. So I was thinking of that. That tells me it's not just a knife. I feel there was fighting. I also feel the phone call was made. The people were sent out. The cleaner came into the house. The people were sent out. There was somebody scooping up paperwork or looking for information in the house. Now, I don't know how much paperwork anyone keeps in those like fraternity houses or sorority houses or on-campus houses, but I'm feeling like they were looking for something in particular. I also feel like a call was made at about 11 o'clock the night prior on the 12th. And everything was set into motion then. It was set into motion. It's going forward. Now, I feel like this is connected to something so much more than like, I'm pissed off at you. I'm a psychopath. I'm coming to kill four random people. That house was being watched. They were being stalked. Everybody in that house was being watched. Okay. Everybody, not Madison, not just Kaylee. Not, you know, Bethany, not just Dylan, all of them. 
and there was one other girl in there. All of them, okay, all of them were being watched. They were being watched from the perspective of, we need to see who's saying what. So we listen. That sounds like some kind of organization or some kind of crime group and or government crime something. They were being watched. I feel like the two girls, Kaylee and Madison, got in the way of an investigation for either a crime trafficking family. I go to Arizona, I go to New Mexico, and I go to California. That's a triangle. That's a triad, a trifecta. That's what they keep telling me in my head, a trifecta. So I go to there. What happens in those states? Trafficking, 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 trafficking. I can't stop saying that. Trafficking. That's what happens in those states. Somebody in that house was speaking and was involved with somebody connected to that organization. And then somebody else in that house was talking about what they knew about what this person said kind of peripherally. So it's like when I say something and there's a whole group of people and I say something and these two people have a secret over here and I'm outing their secret. No one's told me. I just happen upon it observation, I happen to say something that makes one turn against the other. One turns against the other. One turns against the other. Okay? One turns. I don't necessarily think that's even really what happened. I think it was sort of a happenstance. And I also feel like it was three men involved. It's all threes. Three, three, threes. Okay? All the way along. Three men. Now, when you're talking about the roommates, and it sounds really very strange and I don't mean this in a horrible way but one of the roommates presents herself how she isn't so I present myself like this but I'm not really like this so the projection or the energy that I show is cloaked and hidden because I don't want you to know who I am and why I'm at your school okay so that's what I will say I don't want you to understand what I'm really doing there because it's not about education for me. That's not what it's about. So I get that very strongly. So there's a mole in the house. Now, the mole can be working for the good side or the bad side, the crime family or the cops, right? Like I don't know which side and sometimes the cops can be bad and the crime family can be good because it's all flipped and crazy. There is a succession and then there's drugs, okay? So there's three things, weaponized human, trafficking, and drugs. But it's not drugs like pharmaceuticals, opioids, fentanyl, heroin. That's not what I'm talking about. Why do people take drugs besides for fun and besides for illness, right? They take drugs, steroid performance enhancing drugs. What if, while all of this shit's going on, we have people being brought into this school setting, this uh, university. We have people being brought in there that are kind of harnessed and drugged in order to perform, in order for sports, in order for money. Because human trafficking is one thing. It goes in different directions. But what if the sports department, and I am getting that. So there is also a connection to that. And that came through the side of Ethan. So I don't know what he was involved in or not involved in, but somebody that he was around and talked to is connected to that element. Now, you can be friends and have a whole bunch of people that you know and hang around and not think that they're involved in anything. Or you could suspect it, but you're still hanging out with them because you're friends. You know, when you're 20, you're 21, you're not thinking that, right? You're not thinking that this person is going to fuck up my life because they're going to tell me something and I'm randomly going to repeat it, which is what happened with Kaylee. That is why she's saying, I'm so sorry. About 11 o'clock the night before they were killed, she is talking in this restaurant I and bar place setting and she is speaking about something and they are like, absolutely the fuck not. You have to shut up. Okay, so they're not telling her that, but in their head, she is talking to somebody and she's getting bits and pieces of it. Not the whole thing. Bits and pieces. Okay, bits and pieces. 
little bits and pieces. And she's talking to somebody that she assumes is a friend, not an enemy, not a frenemy, but a friend, male. This male person is texting madly. There is a setup starting at 11 p.m. the night prior, okay? The house is already being watched. It's being watched by a multitude of different people. Also, bullshit on the neighborhood not knowing what's going on. Just bullshit on that. Because the people around the house absolutely, I hear this very clearly, absolutely understood back off and shut up. Back off and shut up. There is no excuse whatsoever. I'm going to come out and say it, okay? I'm going to come out and say it. There is no excuse whatsoever to not call 911 for eight hours. I don't care who you are, what kind of mental freezingness you have, okay? I don't care. I don't care how you want to. Literally, the camera just cut off because I said, I don't care how you want to justify that as if people are trying to justify it. I understand trauma from the point of seeing dead bodies. I've seen several. I get it. I understand hearing even guns go off. Like I've heard guns go off and I get it. I get that you can freeze, but eight hours of conscientious direction in a different way is an entirely different thing. What happened in that eight hours? And by the way, by the way, when I'm, okay, one of the girls, and I don't ask me which one because I get confused. It was one of the blonde girls, though. One of the girls is holding on literally to the bed, okay? Like holding on to the bed and being pulled away. I don't feel that they recognized fully who was there. There was more than one person in the house. And that may be the confusion of Dylan, seeing one go in and one go out and catching the eyebrows coming towards her. Note, I was directed at the statement that she made, if it is correct. So hard to tell online, but if it is correct, she said the person was athletic, but not muscular. Let's reword that. One of the people that came in to kill those four was muscular and also had bushy eyebrows. The point was, he was muscular. That's why she said he wasn't. And it was two different people. So did she see the back of one and the front of another? Yes. And they all came from different directions, okay? D like, for different reasons. Now, Brian is a weaponized human. He is put in there, controlled human mind-controlled human to do what they want him to do. And he came in to assess what went on. I keep getting that. Like, to take note of it, to observe it, to keep it where it couldn't be found, to make it in a particular way, to, to make sure the other ones didn't get caught. And there's a payoff for if you take the fall for this, we will go here. There's also mind control with it. I wouldn't take the fall for that, okay? And I'm not saying he wasn't involved in it, but it's not quite to the degree that he was a psychopath in there murdering everybody. There are other people, period. It has to do with trafficking. It has to do with sports. It has to do with steroids, drugs, injectables, whatever you want to call them. All of those things are involved. Each and every person in that house was talking to other people that they assumed were friends. There was many a voyeur in that house because it is a town full of young kids in a house, girls. So the neighbors were watching, always watching. There is video footage of what happened. So this brings another element. I feel like that home was bugged, okay, bugged. By bugged, I mean like in the, you know, 1960s reference, Maxwell Smart gets smart. They placed objects in the house that could absorb, record, uh, watch, rewind, watch, rewind, watch, rewind. There's a full accounting on the internet of the murders. I don't know if it's on the internet you and I would see, but somewhere online, this is being sent around because there is also a ritualistic aspect to it. The Greek system, the numerology, the sigil magic that Dylan put the tattoo on her arm. I'm not disputing getting a tattoo after someone dies. As you know, I did the same thing. 
it's the it's it's what the tattoo is that is a sigil okay so i feel like there's a specific reason for that it's a numerology all of the kids names are connected energetically that's why they were brought there there's a connection this is a spiritual focus this is a ritualistic performance on top of okay so that's another layer it is not just nut job brian came into town and decided i'm going to kill four people i don't know because i'm socially awkward on the spectrum and i'm a freak i'm not saying he's none of those things i'm just saying that's not what happened and i feel like his brain has been controlled um i do feel it's really strange, but I feel like the people in the house knew him or knew of him. So I feel like he was familiar to people in the house. I also feel that you have no idea, nor do I, what was really going on behind the scenes, the spiritual element. When we go to sororities and frat houses, what are we really doing? I didn't go to those, but if you do belong to those type of things. What kind of an energetic system are you following? It's like skull and crossbones. So think about that for a second. Fraternal order, go back to even cartoons with the Flintstones, the fraternal order, blah, blah, blah. That's what they're following. So there is a spiritual component to what goes on as well. And there are people that will be given up for the greater good financially of the organization and that's what I feel the motive is that's what I feel the motive is okay um I feel like Ethan on the other side is fucking confused like he's like shit when he saw this is what I feel I feel like he didn't even suspect who it was so somebody turned on him and I'm almost going into somebody that was very very close to him as in close not friend maybe related on some level there's somebody he's like like open my eyes like wow 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 okay so and and there's there's connections all the way through that I also feel that the confusion lies with why the roommates didn't call 911 why they called everybody but 911 or whoever called I'm not sure who called, but I don't know why you're not calling. What has happened? Were you in an altered state at the time? Were you even in your body? Was there something else going on ritualistically behind the scenes? I will go down that line because I can see it. That's why I'm all over the place. This case is all over the place. Now, I am seeing that, okay, so this is the year 2024. So by the year 2034 so a decade from now we will have the answers some of it is going to come to light this year you're going to hear wording that makes you know it's not just a random lurking stalking asshole who killed them okay because that's what Brian Koberger would be is an asshole ask yourself is that really the reason that these four kids are dead absolutely not um, there is a component. I really feel they got in the mix by accident, at least the ones that are dead, by accident in a cartel of triangular traffickers. Arizona, New Mexico, California. Arizona, 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 New Mexico, California. That is what I think. I think they have people who phone I think they have people who watch. I think this was very constructed. Now, here's something I'm going to say that might offend people. I feel somebody in that house, whomever, don't know if they're the dead roommates or the living roommates, but somebody was getting paid for the information that they were giving. I'm going to have to suspect that it's probably one of the two living ones because otherwise they'd be dead. But I ain't. And, oh my God, I feel like, of course, I'm always going to say this. I feel like there is a component of authority involved because we all know when you have power, it's ridiculous. But the police department on some level is corrupt, is corrupt on some level. And they are being put into position to 
to allow Koberger to get off on something or to get away with it, or that's actually what's happening, I feel. Okay, I'm not saying he will. He might get some time in jail, I mean, or not. I feel like he's so meticulous because he's a weaponized human brain mindset. Weaponized. Weaponized. And I also feel like the weaponization of his thinking, which we would call OCD. I love a good cleaning fest with OCD, but who would think like a person with OCD? Ask yourself that. Who would think like a person with OCD? They say that OCD people have trauma and they want to control, okay? But who would think like a person with OCD? Think of the movie Pulp Fiction. Think of the character that showed up when whichever one, it wasn't John Travolta, it was the other guy, um, Jackson, I guess, Samuel Jackson, I'm trying to think. And he shoots that kid in the car because he won't shut up and he doesn't want to shoot him. He just like is shut the fuck up and shoots him. So the car has to be cleaned. So that guy comes in and he's meticulous. He wears gloves. He has OCD and he cleans. So it's kind of interesting. My mind went to Pulp Fiction and the cleaner guy in the junkyard and the car and your wife's coming home and make me a cup of coffee and put these clothes on and do this. That is very meticulous and very OCD. Most of us can't clean a car like if something dies in our car. We can't clean it to get rid of the smell, to get rid of the blood, to get rid of stuff, okay? A meticulous person knows exactly what kind of chemicals to use to remove that type of thing. Let's say you had a dog that died in the car. You put a dying dog in the car. Do you really think you could get the smell out? Do you think you and I could do that? Do you think taking it to the car wash does that? No, you have to know specifically what's going to work on cars, carpets, curtains, floors, etc. Okay, so I feel like there's an element to what's going on that's like Pulp Fiction. So Brian Koberger is called in to oversee, overlook, at least in his mind, this is what I'm picking up. Now, maybe he went and killed them and thought that that wasn't what he was doing. That's quite possible. But I feel like this is where we are going with this. There is a combination of things. It's big money. And again, Kaylee says, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I know that the media or the people online switched it to say that maybe Madison was the target. But I'm hearing Kaylee say that. So I'm going to stick with she got herself into a situation or circumstance that she was unaware that the person she was speaking with, male, was an enemy. And she was giving this person bits and pieces of information. Now, they show a lot of stuff online, body cam footage, footage, neighbor footage, cop footage, whatever. They go to the house and they're like, knock, knock. There's so much noise. And you see the kids come out. I don't know which kid it is. One time it was Kaylee. It might have been Madison one time. I, or it could have been Xana. I don't know. But the kids come out and they're like, you know, one of them says, I'm not 21 and that's my roommate. And I think it was Kaylee. And then that's my roommate or whatever she says. Why really were those cops there? Because in my neighborhood, there's murders that happen and you can't get 911 to show up. Okay, like I'm being dead serious. Very rarely do they come. You actually, like, what are they, what, a noise complaint in a college town? Or what? And then the cop's standing there and he's like, well, I, instead of giving you a $300 ticket, uh, you should have some beer and spend your money like that. Like, I'm sorry, you don't want them to make noise, but you want them to spend, drop a couple of hundreds on booze and then think they're not going to make noise makes no sense. So I was immediately drawn to what if the police showing up, knock, 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 is like, hey, we can see you. We know what you're doing. That's why we're coming to the door on a noise complaint. Everybody knew they were noisy because they're 20 year olds. That's what they do. Dogs are noisy. Kids are noisy. I mean, Okay, and this is a town full of people in in housing, going to school, drinking and partying. Yeah, they're noisy. Anyway, I also get a connection, and I have no idea who this is, but to a father figure connected to the house. 
So there's somebody writing checks with a lot of money. I don't know whose father it is and why I'm using the word father figure to the house. I write checks. I pay for housing. I pay for this. I pay for that. I'm also involved peripherally because of how I make my money. How do I make my money? Don't know who that is, but I'm also getting that. So this is my first video and it's very like all over the place because I didn't know where to go with it because I was all over the place. It's not what is being presented out there. It is different. So this is my first video on the Idaho 4. Okay, thanks you guys for listening. I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com.